Welcome back. More and more Californians are being turned off by solar as their PG&E bills rise. Consumers say they're picking up more of the bill. And tonight, ABC 10 anchor Laura Painter is looking at the cost of going green. That's right, Alex. For years, California was eager to subsidize solar panels and other similar upgrades. Typically, when it comes to going solar, you had to pay more upfront, while subsidies and long-term efficiency savings made the investment worth it over time. But now that mentality is shifting as incentives from private utility companies like PG&E go away. I said I want to put as many panels as we can on the house so that we can keep our electricity bill down. Cindy and Paul Harmon have lived in their Auburn home for more than three decades, raising their kids, growing their garden, and installing dozens of solar panels in an effort to go green and reduce costs over time. When our system gets cooking and the days get longer, we don't pay anything for electricity at all. Many homeowners, like the Harmons, have bet on the long-term savings of going solar. But now, the math of going green is changing. Typically, when solar customers generate extra electricity, they can store it in a battery or sell it back to the power grid. If they sell it, their utility company would give them a credit, lowering their energy bill. But a unanimous vote by the California Public Utilities Commission in 2022 that took effect April 2023 cut solar incentives dramatically leaving new solar customers with smaller credits from private utilities by at least 75%. There are lots of benefits that used to be counted when we looked at the costs and benefits of solar, and the PUC completely changed that calculation, so much so that they slashed the payments that people who have solar on their rooftops get for extra power that they sell back to the system. And that made it economically not feasible for a lot of businesses and California families. Now, many homeowners question whether those savings and subsidies that made the transition to solar possible still balance out the higher upfront costs. I sat down with former CPUC Commissioner Loretta Lynch for answers. Why would the CPUC vote in favor of that? I think that the regulator has become the regulated. They are just too cozy with PG&E, and when PG&E says jump, instead of saying why, they say how high. I reached out to PG&E about the CPUC vote. They say, quote, incentives need to be fair and equitable for all customers. Because of the state policy, non-solar residential customers today pay 15% more per month to subsidize the electric bills of those with rooftop solar panels. The CPUC said in December 2022 that, quote, the decision improves the pricing structure and credits to new rooftop solar customers of PG&E, Southern California Edison, and San Diego Gas and Electric. The new tariff supplements and bolsters federal incentives, and the decision has no impact on existing rooftop solar customers maintaining their current compensation rates. Although the new metering rates only apply to new solar customers who started solar after April 2023, solar customers like the Harmons will be subject to to the new rates 20 years after their solar system was first turned on. What's the incentive to go solar if you're not going to get enough money to make it worth your while? The Harmons have already seen what it's like to pay more for electricity. A few years into their solar use, the Harmons say their solar system was broken for more than seven months. They say they paid hundreds of dollars more for their utilities during that time. So that shows you when you don't have solar and you're getting billed for electricity at the high rates, you're paying a lot more. Solar advocates like Bernadette Del Chiaro with the California Solar and Storage Association oppose the change in incentives from private utility companies, saying it makes solar unaffordable. It was a steep reduction in the value and it took effect basically right away. And so there was no adjustments uh, to the industry. And so it, the result of that, consumers predictably stopped going solar. Our market is down 60 to 80 percent. In 2006, California launched a Million Solar Roofs initiative, jumpstarting the clean energy industry in the wake of rolling blackouts and the Enron scandal. By 2019, the state hit its Million Solar Roofs goal, calling for a new goal, one million solar batteries. A year prior, in 2018, State Senator Scott Weiner passed SB 700 to incentivize solar batteries through consumer rebates managed by the CPUC. But solar advocates believe progress stopped under the Newsom administration, who appoints commissioners to the CPUC. They say since 2022, some incentives have been slashed for homeowners, businesses, schools, and more. It's very un-California 
It's hard to even recognize California right now when it comes to clean energy policy. We used to be the world's leader when it comes to solar energy. People look to us for how to build a vibrant, affordable, diverse market. The change in incentives has impacted thousands of jobs and dozens of businesses have closed or left the state. The question right now for the solar industry of California is, have we hit rock bottom yet? Or is there more decline to come? In 2020, California mandated all new home builds must have solar panels on them. This has added tens of thousands of dollars to the cost of a new home. Solar advocates argue with less solar incentives, those homeowners are now shouldering those added costs for longer. While solar is still a really good investment, you have to wait longer for the system to pay for itself, right? The whole idea is you save on your utility bill and the upfront cost of the solar system pays for itself over time. Del Chiaro says it used to take about five years to have your solar system pay for itself. But now she says that range is about 10 years. For a lot of consumers, that's just too long to wait. What would you say to homeowners, businesses, consumers who are struggling with solar, trying to make it pencil out? I would say still give it a good fair shake. Take a look, see if it works for you. Some payment options include leasing your solar, rolling your solar into your mortgage, or third-party financing if you don't have equity. What do you think is the right path for California and solar companies? We need to be putting solar wherever it's possible. Let's go solar with or without the PUC, and then let's change out the people who are standing in the way of really reaching our climate goals. As for the Harmons, they're bracing for any changes that may come their way, but worry about other customers and the future of solar. What is the incentive? If you're going to penalize people for getting solar, why get solar? Mm -hmm. And where's the argument that we are green California when you're doing things like this? Mm -hmm. Laura, a lot to take in. And we do want to point out that California is not the only state to change their solar incentives, right? Yeah, Alex, that is correct. And now some efforts are underway in other states to add those incentives back. In fact, Nevada's utility regulators approved restoring retail rate net metering for their existing customers. After taking some incentives away, they reportedly saw a 32% loss in the state's installation sector and a loss of more than 2,500 jobs. In Arizona, a state Supreme Court ruling ended up sparing thousands of homeowners who leased their solar from paying state property taxes on it. The solar advocates say rulings and votes like these could point California back in the right direction. And Alex, I did reach out to the CPUC, PG&E, and Governor Newsom's office Office. They all referred me to statements online by the CPUC and PG&E, which are referenced in this story. All right, Laura, thank you so much. And you already know we will continue to follow this story.